Ayurveda regards to Ma Saraswati with the lightning of the lamp followed by the university kulli. Nushri, are you playing this? No, ma'am. Anandita ma'am is supposed to play. I think there is some technical issue for some uh, Anandita ma'am, are you there? Hello, bhai. sorry, I'm going to talk to my father. Suyesh, please, please beat your mic. Suyesh. Ma'am, uh, while sharing that file, uh, video file, you need to optimize. Uh, optimize option is there in sharing window on the top right corner. Unless you optimize, that video will not be visible to others. Deshmukh, if you can play, it's okay. Uh, sir, actually, uh, I'm running it from my phone, and okay. uh, right now I do not have that uh, file with me. Let's wait, Dr. Chakravarti will be doing that.
brotherhood, belongingness, and pride amongst all of us. I would now like to invite respected Professor S.K. Dubey, sir, Director, Institute of Management Studies, to formally welcome our panelists and the gathering with his words. Thanks, Anushri. Uh, respected uh, Dr. Upen Das, Ram Upen Das, sorry, uh, Professor and Head, Center for Regional Trade, Respected Dr. Jamna Shuklaji, a leading uh, chartered accountant of the region. Dr. Anandita Chakravarti, who coordinator of the panel discussion on the theme post budget 2022. Esteemed faculty members and my dear student. On the behalf of Institute of Management Studies and my own behalf, I extend a warm welcome to Professor Ram Upen Das Ji and Madam Jamna Shukla Ji on the occasion of the panel discussion on the post budget 2022 organized by a shoot of management studies Banaras of the University. Namaskar. Budget for any country is a very important dimension and we had witnessed the same for last 70 to 71 years that is after independence every time people the citizen of the country the resident of the country they had the expectations with the budget and mainly it depends upon the ideology and the philosophy of the ruling party and the ideology and the philosophy of the leader of the country. But there is one thing which remains constant. That is the kind of economic system which prevails in that very country. And we had witnessed that India's GDP robust recovery twice with the past two waves of the pandemic and it is a testimony to the nation's economic resilience yes 
the ideology or the philosophy of the ruling party is going to add something or it is going to change something but that is the nature or the shape of the indian economic system and we have proved several time that indian economy is very very robust especially when we had a crisis the budget 2022 mainly focus on the growth and all inclusive welfare promoting technology enabled development energy transition climate action and also virtuous cycle starting from private investment crowded in by the public investment it's not my day we are having a very renowned established panelist who are going to share their views on the pros and cons of the budget at the same time how it will lead to the growth of the economy as a whole but one thing which is very important this budget has four priorities so that we can strengthen our infrastructure in the form of pm gati shakti inclusive development productivity enhancement and investment to financing of investments so without wasting time once again my, i extend a warm welcome to both the panelists and i am very much hopeful the kind of initiative which is taken by dr anandita chakravarti to organize this panel discussion that will be very very useful and fruitful for the student of institute of management studies thank you thank you very much namaskar thank you so much sir i would now like to invite our esteemed and effervescent professor ashish bajpai sir to address us with his cheerful and informative words a very warm very welcome, warm welcome to each one of us and we are really delighted to have on the panel professor rab upendra who is the head center for regional trade and another distinguished panelist madam jabda shukla ji we are really eagerly awaiting we are eagerly awaiting to learn and uncover the the dimensions because the obvious dimensions of the budget they are in the public domain no doubt and as we all understand that budget sets the tone of the economy so what goes on in the in the minds of the planners this we all of us can learn from these two distinguished panelists uh, i do not want to much interrupt and we all eagerly await to really have a very enriching session from both of these two panelists i extend on behalf of the faculty of management studies and the institute of management studies i on my own behalf i extend a very warm welcome and really feel thankful that we get to distinguished panelists with us thank you so much thank you sir borrowing the words of our honorable finance minister shri shrimati nirmala sitharaman the budget 2022 seeks to lay the foundation and give a blueprint to steer the economy over the amrit kal of the next 25 years from india at 75 to india at 100 continuing the same i would like to invite my fellow students Lakshmi B, Ayush Agrawal, and Kriti Prajapati to present the highlights of Budget 
Very well, good morning to everyone present here. And today I'll be joined by Ayush Agrawal and Triti Pujapati, present the highlights of budget 2020-23. Now moving on to the flow of contents. So we'll begin with economy, followed by taxes, agriculture, duties on various industries, finance and inclusion, digital currency, MSME and startups, education and development, and we'll be concluding with healthcare. So now, the prime uh, focus of the budget of 2022-23 was on four major points. The first. Action. Am I audible now? Yes, yes. So yeah, the fourth point of the prime focus of this year's budget is productivity enhancement and investment, sunrise opportunities, energy transition and climate action. We'll be seeing all these in details in the further slides. Now moving on to economy. So I believe economy is one of the most important parts of this highlight uh, budget highlights presentation today because this will be our country for the upcoming year. The future has expanded by 5.4 million, which is uh, from 5.5 to 7.5 lakh crore. National year of 23 expenditure has been seen at 10.7 uh, lakh crores. Also, the emergency credit line uh, uh, guarantee scheme or the ECLGS cover has been expanded by 50,000 to 5 lakh crores. As I have already mentioned, the prime focus of this year's budget, that is the uh, PM Gati Shakti Yojana or the Prime Minister Gati Shakti program, this focuses on linking uh, about 16 ministries together, including uh, uh, civil aviation, railways, electricity, and also information technology. The inclusive development program aims at bringing together marginalized sectors and communities for sustainable and empowered development. Productivity enhancement and also sun, uh, under the sunrise opportunities, drones have been identified as a sunrise sector and uh, startups will be uh, promoted to facilitate the drone Shakti Yojana. So followed, uh, following this, uh, the budget also presented highlights on energy transition, climate action and financing of investments. So the productivity link incentive schemes have been uh, developed for 14 sectors which have received uh, an indeed excellent response and also an investment tensions of over 30 lakh crores. And in the year 2022-23, all the states be uh, allowed a fiscal deficit of up to 4% of their uh, GSDP or gross state domestic product. So this was all about economy. Now we'll be moving on to taxes. So we, we all were very eagerly waiting for uh, Anushri, I think uh, Lakshmi is facing some internet problem. Uh, Ayush, you can continue with this. Okay, ma'am. Uh, so very, a uh, very warm and a pleasing good morning to one and all present over here. I am Ayush Agrawal and I will be taking further it. So as uh, Lakshmi was talking about taxes portion, taxes was something which affects everyone in one way or another. So we'll see how the budget 22-23 has been there for the Indian government or for the Indian economy. So for this, the government was a stable and a very predictable tax regime because there was no changes in the income tax slabs as the common people always used to address this portion and everyone looks for it while being and seeing the budget proportion or criteria. Now government has uh, tried 
to provide one time window to correct omissions at ITR's file and updated returns to be filed within two years. So updated returns criteria for two years is something which is relief given in this budget criteria or in this budget proportion. And it was something which is being said by the our finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman and any sense of surcharge on income not allowed as a business expenditure. So it's being quoted thereby. And also 1% TDS on transfer of virtual assets above a threshold has to be given to be taxed. And there is no deduction is allowed while computing the income except of cost of acquisition. But one of the most burning topics that I would like to hear draw your kind attention towards is the taxation regarding the 30% on digital assets. So it is something which has given a boost. Why boost? Because I would like to concern here that in 2080 government has or RBI has clearly said that cryptos are banned in India. But now having it on digital assets, 30% surcharge is something that government is showing. They are again regulating it and in no arbitrary manner like the demonetization or overnight, it will not be banned in Indian economy. Now moving further. So here, uh, if I want to explain further, so the loss cannot be set from any other income as the previous point was. And a new provision to allow taxpayers to file an updated return is being something which is being accounted thereon. Now there is alternative minimum tax cooperative societies to be cut down to 15% and a proposal is there that will uh, reduce the surcharge on cooperative society to 7% for those whose income is in between 1 crore to 10 crore. So from cooperative societies it's being that it will be around 7% but the income should be between 1 crore to 10 crore and the taxation reduction limit is increased to 14% on employees contribution towards the new pension scheme account for uh, state government employees. Now moving further, I would like to discuss about agriculture. Agriculture is something which is very prominent in Indian economy since independence as our large population is dependent upon it and it is uh, why it's being focused on. Now government has decided to pay 2.37 lakh crores. It's a huge number towards the procurement of wheat and paddy under the MSP operation. MSP is minimum support price. It is given when farmers could not able to sell their products on a free market then MSP used to be provided. Now in 22-23 it's being announced as a international year of millets. So it's a good news for farmers who used to produce the millets. And a rationalized scheme to increase the domestic oil seed production will be brought to cut down imports. So Atma Nirbharta again is something which our PM always used to emphasis on is reluctantly shown over here. Now the Kishan drones for crop assessment, land records, spraying of insecticides are expected to drive a technology in agriculture. We used to say that in pandemic there are fintech financial used to convert into a technology so fintech is being arriving. Our education system has been uh, assigned with the technology so edutech is there. Now in coming years my dear friends agriculture will also have a new wave of technology and it will combine to a agri tech. Agriculture will no more be agriculture but it will be agri tech as our budget our also budget proposes also. it. And a Kenwa Betwa River linking project what 44,000 uh, 40, above 44,000 crores has been announced. So it's that on irrigation pro proportion also government is taking care of. So there is being a draft for DPR for five rivers uh, which has been linked being finalized. So it's a great news there also for farmers and uh, uh, irrigation proportions. Now natural farmings will be promoted along with the Ganga river corridor. So being an uh, emphasis on organic farming is something that the health, health conscious or the health is being taken into consideration. Why we used to say that organic farming used to fetch more profits as people are uh, eagerly able to pay more because they used to fetch the nutrition portion more. So the government is also promoting it and government has done for the chemical free natural farming also to boost the sustainable agriculture because productivity also used to loss because of the insecticides, pesticides, so it being there. Now NABAD is there to help the co-investment model for the finance, startups and agriculture and rural enterprise. Now I will be talking about duties on various industries. So industries is something which always look into account for the budget proportion. 
and here one important and crucial thing is that the chemicals has import duty is being cut down why because to make in india procedure especially methanol because government has decided to cut down the duty so more production can be done in india only and it could have a further leading process now custom duty and exemption on steel scrap will be given so a boost to msme has been tried in the sector of steel which is giving boost there and the custom duties will be revoked for the high steel bars and flat products uh, one important thing that i would like to uh, uh, say here is the uh, in from october 22 uh, blended and unblended fuel will be differentiated because in unblended fuel there will be 2 liter 2 rupees per liter additional duty is there let me clarify what is uh, blended and unblended fuel blended fuel is something in which the biofuels is being added and government wants to say that in petrol or diesel we should have these fuels combined so unblended fuel used to get uh, expensive by 2 rupees and import duty on polished diamonds is to be cut for 5% and uh, saw uh, diamond to the nil. So it is good for diamond merchants that it is positive budget for them. And for the electronic device market, it's being that the custom duty is being concessioned. So it's a good news for them as the India is moving towards the digital India process. Now, finance and inclusion. Finance and inclusion is something which has affected since last decade to now every single citizen of India. Now we will see its impact in this budget. So a huge, huge amount of 1 lakh crore is being provided to the states in the financial year 22-23. Now let's see where it will be utilized. So as PM Gati Shakti is being announced, so under it, it is a 50 year interest free loan that's been given to states. So where they can use it, they will be using it for the optical cable fibers under PM Gati Shakti for uh, uh, Pradhan Mantri Gramin Sarak Yojana for having more of digitalization through there. So it's that. And I, as I have talked about Digital India, so 1.5 lakh post offices is being converted into a banking, mobile banking and ATM. So digitalization is there because in the roots of our villages, post offices are there more than banks. So the digitalization is something which is happening there on. Now, uh, there is also a proposal for the digital rupee for RBI using the blockchain technology and it will be launched in 2023 after the budget, uh, the Shakti Kaas Das, the governor of RBI has done a press release and said it will become in 2023 only. Now moving further. So, measures will be taken up for the private capital in infrastructure sector. It will be capped to 20% of the government equity and it will be managed by the private fund managers. And 75 digital banks in 75 districts will be set up by the scheduled commercial bank to encourage the digital payments. And surety bonds is the substitute for bank guarantees that will be acceptable in government procurements. Now, one thing that's important and that's being underlined is the gift and IFSE. What is gift? Gift is nothing but a Gujarat International Finance Tech City. Uh, so, a gift, what it used to do, it used to provide the world class foreign university and institution to offer courses in financial management, fintech, technology, engineering, etc. But one important thing is that it will be free from domestic regulations. Now, let me clarify what is domestic regulations. We know UGC used to guideline for the university in India and for the senior secondary education, CBSC and ICSC and various boards will be there. But for the gift city, these will not be there for domestic regulations. And for uh, affecting it, IFSCA or IFSC is there, that is International Financial Service Center Authority, that will provide a high end human resource. So, human capital building is emphasis in this budget, and uh, there will be less brain drain and more of the human capital through there. And there will be an international arbitrary center also if any disputes occur, so it will be settled under the international jurisprudence. And for the service, there will be a global capital and sustainability and the country and it will be in the country facilitated within the gift city. Now moving further, digital currency that I have talked about. So it will be future in India for the currency purpose. Let's see what's there in this budget. So as I have talked already about 30% taxations and blockchain and everything, but let me clarify one thing. 
that in US, uh, the cryptos are charged as a digital asset, but in UK, it is charged as a stock. So India has to choose one. So India is taking a charge of 30% in it. So it is t t t telling us that it is a digital asset moreover. And it has to be further fluctuated, uh, further flourish in the future. The reason is that the government is in no mood to ban it. So now moving ahead, I would like to call Kirti for MSME and startups. Ayush, can you call her? Yes, sir. Yes, Kriti, continue. Ayush, you continue with the presentation. Okay, ma'am. And so, uh, be, uh, be uh, fast, little fast. Okay. So now further also, I would be like to continue with MSME and startups. So government is in mood to give a boost to the startups because it is a new entrepreneurial wave that India is having in this decade. Let's see how it's being there. So uh, uh, amount of 6,000 crore is to be uh, programmed to add. Okay. So, yes, uh, continue. So a 6,000 program to rate MSME to be rolled out in the over five years. It's a huge amount because uh, M startups and MSME will prove to be a significant booster for our economy in coming years. And uh, uh, MSME such as Odyam, Ishram, National Career Services and Ash uh, Ashim Portal will be interlinked and their scope will be widened. So government is trying every bit to increase the startups and to promote and boost it. Startups will be promoted for the drone Shakti also and a private equity or venture capital will be invested for amount around 5.5 lakh crore in startup and expert committee will be set up for the suggestions and to attract the investment because every startup when in a while required our angel capitalist or venture capitalist to invest in it so government is taking plan to proceed further with it and existing tax benefits are there for the startups which is offered at redemption of taxes for three consecutive years to be extended by one more year now, education and skill development. Education is something uh, which everyone in, in India focuses majorly because education being a future for many. And skill is being too because the demographic profile of India is being young and what young people require is education and skills. So we'll see that as a pillar of the economy. So states are encouraged to revise the syllabus for the agricultural universities to meet the need of natural zero buzzard or organic farming for the modern day agriculture. As I have talked, the agriculture will be greatly changed in the agri-tech. So one class one TV channel program of P E Vidya will be expanded from 12 to 200 TV channels. So it's a great amount for flourishing it. Now moving further, digital universities will be set up to provide education and to be built hub and spoke model. One class, one TV channel is also implemented to provide supplementary education to the children and to make up the loss for formal education due to COVID. To launch national skill qualification framework that is an SQF to cater dynamic industrial needs. Now healthcare and infrastructure because COVID has proven that India somehow lagged in agriculture in uh, healthcare infrastructure. But now and India tried to build it and we have facing the things. So let's see what's there in this budget. 
So the major focus area is uh, is tacked, uh, catered with 89,251 crore health budget for 22-23, and it's been strengthening the health infrastructure through schemes like PMSSY, that is Pradhan Mantri Swasthya Suraksha Yojana, that is a notable nice for rise in with the effect of 43 percent and there has been sustainable rise for the outlay of the ayushman bharat health infrastructure mission for an amount of 1040 crores in 2022 which is wise than estimated to be 5846 crore in 22 23 and to boost the infrastructure development in healthcare system for the covid and beyond it so it will consist of digital registry of health providers and health facilities to unique health identity. As our PM has talked, every health history of a person should be in a digital format. So the uh, budget uh, have the emphasis on it. And 95% of 112 aspirational districts have made significant growth in health infrastructure. So it's a good news for our economy. For mental health counseling, there will be a national telemental health program will be launched and an open platform for national digital health ecosystem will also be ruled out. So there are many things for the health infrastructure in this regard. So the, uh, with this, I would like to conclude that this budget is an uh, aspirational budget in all the phases. There may be everything could not be catered with a single sort, but the, our finance minister and our government has tried to be in this limit to prove ourselves to uh, flourish and prosper with the most increasing manner. Thanks a lot from my side and from IMBHU for this presentation. Thank you, Ayush and everyone for such a comprehensive presentation. Now that we're all aware of the highlights of this year's extensive budget as presented by our respected finance minister, it becomes all the more important to hear an analysis of the same from our distinguished expert speakers. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our first guest speaker, CA Jamuna Shukla Ma'am. Mrs. Jamuna Shukla, the first practicing lady chartered accountant in Varanasi, she is the Secretary General of All India Federation of Tax Practitioners, North Zone of India. She is a faculty member at the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, Varanasi, and also serves as the keynote speaker for the institution and other professional platforms. She's also a member of the National Executive Committee of All India Federation of Tax Practitioners. C.A. Jamuna Shukla Ma'am is the founder trustee of Varuna Seva Trust and has served as the member of the Jilla Ganga Samiti and Jilla Paryavaran Samiti. She's also the patron of Diva Foundation and the former national treasurer of the World Women Awakening Organization, also known as the Vishwanari Abhyudaya Sangathan. She has chaired many social and professional seminars and has been actively working for social causes since more than 10 years through various platforms and even on an individual level. With an experience of over 27 years in tax consultancy, auditing, project finance, etc., Mrs. Jamuna Shukla is the senior partner of Messrs. Jamuna Shukla and Associates. Ma'am, we are delighted to have you here amongst us today. I would like to request you to please enlighten us with your insights on this year's budget. Thank you so much, Anushri ji. Am I audible? Is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You're perfectly audible. First of all, Naman to Ma Vidya Adini and Mahamna ji. I start with a respected Professor S.P. Mathur ji, Dean IMS BHU, respected Dr. Ram Upendra Das ji, Head and Professor, Head and Professor, Center for Regional Trade, Respected Professor Sri S. K. Dubeji, Director IMBHU. Respected uh, Professor Asis Baspeji. Uh, respected Dr. Anindita Chakravarti Ji, Coordinator of the program. Respected seniors, my friends and dear delegates. I first of all, I extend my heartfelt thanks to Anandita Ji. Anindita ji for inviting me to this really a uh, very honorable event and a very contemporary subject also. And uh, I also extend my appreciation to Anushri for uh, conducting so well. 
and Lakshmi ji, Ayush Agrawal ji and Priti ji for presenting a very comprehensive highlights of the budget. I think much is said by them, <laughs> nothing much is uh, left to us, but still uh, on some points we need to understand more in detail way. So I would, be, I would try to take out, especially for taxation. But before that, what uh, 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 Ayush said, this is aspirational budget. Yes, I do agree with a very futuristic budget and focusing on capital expenditure, more, more investment in infrastructure, more uh, focus on digitalization, more focus on better environment, we very developed ports and all. So we uh, all you said in your highlights, it was really uh, to the point. But what a general, along with that, what a general man, a common man expect from the budget is, what happens whenever budget is announced, mostly who watches it? It is the taxpayer who watches it. And to, there was nothing for the taxpayer, like in a common man, there is there are so many things. When I will speak up, little later, but as a common man doesn't understand the technicalities of taxation, what is there hidden in the uh, finance uh, fine prints. And uh, you also know the our uh, FM took very less time to explain all these things, RC took shortest time so far to present the budget. So uh, we thought that there is nothing for uh, in taxation and all. But I would like to uh, tell you all that there are 84 amendments, sir. Uh, our chief guest and all, there are 84 amendments in direct tax and in direct tax there are so many means I have no numbers in counting but there are 40 to 45 amendments in that also. So you can understand and see simply completed within 2 to 3 minutes uh, direct tax as well as indirect tax. So there was, uh, we thought there was nothing. Common man expectation is always with respect to slab of tax. If it is not liberalized or it is not extended, then they are getting disappointed. So we can say that there was no appeasing. It is not an appeasing budget. There was no footprint for any election. And uh, that way, uh, it many people just, uh, they were all very angry, all common men care, kya budget, kya budget, majani aya, kya hai, bakwase, bakwase. But let's see how it is working. How, what they have focused, you have already covered through PM Gati Shakti and providing platform for a balanced overall integration, which well integration of different departments. What happens if one department is working, then other department scrap those working. So it should not be there because it is vestige of our resources. So they have taken care of this and uh, coordination between our various department, development in investments you have already covered. Uh, E-energy, e more and more E-station, that is very good. A welcome step, there, whatever is welcome step, of course I will uh, repeat it. And 400 Vande Bharat trains, of course this seems to be very unrealistic. So let's see how they are going to achieve it because it is a budget for Amrit Kal, 75 to 100 years. So let's see by the end of that time we may have 100 cargo they have uh, announced. We we may have we will be they will be building 100 cargo station. Let's see how much we will be reaching. What they have uh, uh, this budget has focused is pound priming principles like. If they will spend more, there will be more money in the economy. And not only from government side, they have also enhanced the budget. They have also diverse, uh, diverted funds, heavy funds to states also. So not only they will be spending in capital expenditure, but they also promote states to come into this uh, line. As well as they are also encouraging private participation. How, how they are now, you must have, I, I didn't uh, see that they have uh, increased the uh, limit up to 68% uh, 
to procure in uh, to produce these defense uh, items uh, indigenously otherwise earlier what uh, what used to happen we used to import more and more everything was uh, getting import but since last few years they have now indigenously we are producing and gradually government is increasing this indigenous participation so this time very large percentage it is 68 percent so they are promoting our indigenous investment also not from government side only and also uh, state allocation already i told they have tried to reduce the custom duties which because many things we can produce well but because it is uh, cheaper to import so people are importing so they have increased those items what we can produce indigenously they have uh, our fm has it enhance those rates of uh, custom duty so that our uh, manufacturer will produce in india and at the same time they have reduced custom duty on the items which are we are still to have uh, good quality we are not better in that uh, production so they have reduced so very smart budget i can say that, that way that is they have uh, reduced that those because in uh, mobile production they are far far good but some items are very costly so our uh, mobile uh, phones are sets are not that cheaper uh, uh, what we expected because of that camera something some part is there so they have reduced uh, drastically those custom duty on that part so that full uh, it will be imported and it will be manufactured in india assembled in india so this is how they are in there are so many such items i have given this example that they have rationalized this custom duty so this is a very welcome step see what i uh, i will i will i keep repeating that firm planning they, they have encouraged although they have not given the direct benefits direct slab uh, reduction or something but they our government wants us to not they don't want to give you job uh, job creation they don't want they more want to we should they want to make us enable to create jobs so for that they are full to planning in that only and uh uh, another welcome step is CBS in post office. Of course, this is a very uh, welcome step. It, it is going to happen. This will uh, strengthen village people's uh, uh, financial uh, movement. And of course, job creation through no doubt, I told uh, capital uh, investment will uh, how see what we expect, expect from the budget is how the economy will uh, this budget will address unemployment situation how economy will be recovered and how inflation will be recovered these are some basic things what budget has to touch upon so indirectly how they have tried to like uh, any uh, job creation to capital expenditure more and more and even animation games they have put a lot of encouragement financing as well as lot of uh, support has been given from government so that because it is a new venture it is not that new but still very booming uh, area to come up our it personnel so this is going to create another um, very um, Means it is expected to create 80, what they have thought of 60 to 80 lakhs of job creation. Let's see, but uh, uh, it seems it will be feasible because of this uh, announcement of uh, animation games and uh, technology improvement. And boom, because of 5G, they are strengthening 5G area. So I hope this sector will boom uh, much and will create a good job uh, opportunity. Opportunity. As well as foreign investment, uh, I will come uh, in taxation just I am after a few lines. Foreign investors uh, through sovereign bonds and even green bonds, indigenous investment, uh, many things they have uh, launched which will of course uh, uh, boom the investment also. And uh, above all, we are the sixth largest G GDP holder. Earlier we were fifth, but because of this pandemic, we and slip to six but it is still a good uh, uh, um, benchmark for uh, others also and for us also we should keep trying to uh, our fm is trying very well to reach to fifth fourth let's see and uh, it is very hopeful also we are also hopeful and basically they have um, uh, what I would like to see now, I'm coming to taxation part, but before that, they have encouraged startups uh, uh, in all the 
uh, uh, sectors or all the lines like of financing as well as their taxation also what they have increased the taxation period of benefit till one more year what it was going to end to 2022 but they have increased it to 2023 so that they can avail more tax benefit this bracket has been enhanced so that they will be benefited and there will be more and more uh, booming in this startup already i would like to say uh, put here yeah, that uh, already we are largest uh, this uh, startup ecosystem in India. We have around 14,000 startups and we have uh, in 21 we had uh, 46 or 45 unicorn uh, companies and now uh, I just went through this data of unicorn uh, how many unicorn industries we have uh, on 10 February then it came to 92 so it was surprising that how much boom is there how much there is a uh, hype in this uh, industry how much they are coming up maybe see this is what our uh, government wanted others to come work and grow yourself so because of that also more and more startups are coming there is another reason to how they are coming existing industries are also coming in the startup but new ones are also coming because their system they are there are so many promotions for them to uh, right from establishing to financing fintech they are using fintech what uh, or, uh, uh, Ayush has already mentioned in his uh, presentation that fintech like uh, venture capital and all. So everything has been uh, going on very well. Now I must come to the, this was a summary how our uh, budget is uh, aiming at developing our economy. Now uh, coming to taxation part because uh, being tax professional uh, uh, it's my duty to highlight some uh, in detail already uh, he has taken i has taken uh, first of all let me uh, uh, share the thing like the, uh, you people know that we have only uh, last year uh, march 20 data what uh, is there that uh, 6.23 crore people filed it fine and out of this 6.23 crores only 75% people have, 75% of them are filing return up to income of 5 lakh. You understand 5 lakh means no tax. It is going without tax. And then out of this whole figure, sir, only 8% are filing the return uh, of income, having income more than 10 lakhs rupees. You can just imagine what is the position of direct tax. Uh, and it is uh, very uh, surprising and disgusting also. That's why government is trying every year to increase the tax net. And how the tax net is increased? Every year they bring some TDS policies, some new TDS uh, sections are added every year. Being professional, we have to keep track of all these things, you know. This time also, uh, cryptocurrency, there is 1% TDS. And one more is there, 194R is there. I will explain why I, while I will be coming to direct taxes. So I have already started no doubt direct taxes. So there was the you and cry that there is no relaxation in uh, tax rates. But there are so many relaxation in surcharge. Uh, friends, it's, it is to be noted that the surcharge plays a very important role. I agree that government has not addressed the small taxpayers, but they have addressed the demand of high income tax bracket people. Because uh, nowadays it was felt that this high income group people are migrating from India to foreign countries. Because uh, we, in India, high in income tax uh, taxation is very high, very high. You know, this surcharge goes up to 37% along with your income of uh, 30% plus this 4% and 37% surcharge. So, this is a very high taxation or high, high income. So, people see high income group have easy... It is very easy for them to settle the outside also. They can resolve, go for that. But our other people who are having low income, it is difficult for them. But high income people can have choice. If they decide to, they can always migrate. So it was felt that there is very high migration. So to 
caters some of the benefits to some relaxation to them. This surcharge has been addressing many very welcoming ads like uh, dividend surcharge. Dividend surcharge has been reduced to 15% overall. Earlier, dividend was tax free. Since last year, it has become taxable in our hands. So uh, once it is, and you know, see this big income group, people have heavy income of dividend and even capital gain. I mean, I mean to capital gain. So uh, these people uh, were uh, taxed very high. So they have reduced this such a very welcome step. This will not only encourage invest. Uh, this is going to encourage investment both way by reducing such a dividend income. It is fixed. Although you may have income, see. 30% surcharge will be there for other incomes. It is not uh, dedicated fully only on dividend income and capital gains. Capital gains is very, very welcoming. Uh, I would uh, appreciate this step because you know, ki, uh, we are in Varansi, in Varansi also property. And uh, this, uh, first let me tell, uh, uh, tell you that ki this capital gain has been. Uh, 15% surcharge was already there in listed company shares. It was already there. But now they have extended it to another shares also, unlisted shares also, as well as all kind of capital gains. You know, there is wide range of capital gains um, to be taxed. Like you sell properties, you sell anything. There are a list of assets. Whatever you sell, there is capital gain. And capital gain comes in pros and pros of it. Like people staying in Bangalore, Delhi, Mumbai, when they sell flats and all, so they have income more than 2 crore, 3 crore. So they were uh, subjected to 30%, 25% society. It is a slag wise, it increases. So it was very harsh provision uh, because, and this will also, uh, so government has address this they have reduced in all kind of capital gains not only listed share now unlisted share and all capital assets so very welcoming so we now just see uh, what we say government has not given any benefit to common men no they have given and drastically they have given it is not uh, uh, the highly appreciated method uh, they have sacrificed a lot in surcharge and also they have uh, uh made uh, there are you people might be knowing there are minimum alternative tax which a companies or any institution or cooperative society have to pay if they have no enough profit taxable actually there are some cal technical calculation as per income tax profit comes different and as per book profit comes different but government has made it uh, compulsory that you have to pay a minimum tax on your book profit so, so for corporate it was 15 percent for the cooperative society it was 18 points uh, 18 percent so now they have uh, brought it at par at par and they have made for both of them as uh, minimum alternative tax we say it is 15 percent for them and surcharge also for them also it was irrational they have rationalized it so three uh, at three places they have reduced surcharge and fix the cap 15 percent for cooperative society for dividend income and capital gains and now the most buzzing topic is uh, with a direct taxation is cryptocurrency what you already uh, covered in uh, your presentation but uh, they have not directly mentioned this cryptocurrency. What they have brought the term is visual digital asset. VDA, I will say it VDA. Visual digital asset. Now, first, they are, still they are yet to give the full definition what all things will come, it will be covered in visual dis, uh, digital asset. But it is 100% covered in cryptocurrency. So they have made it taxable. You know, friends, you were saying ki, uh, uh, it is uh, that she has indicated that they are going to legalize it and all. Uh, no, friends, it is not uh, yet legalized and there is no indication of also ki that it will be legalized. But income tax is less concerned with what is legal and what is illegal. They want their tax. If you are paying, if something is remaining untaxed, it, is, it was untapped because India is the largest investor in cryptocurrency. Although we have not, it is not legalized in our country, but we are the largest investor. Even my son, the, uh, when he entered in first year of college, 
his friends were investing in uh, his seniors invested in cryptocurrency i'm talking about five years back story he also is invested 10000 only he has so far invested but he has invested so we have the largest youth not i'm saying ki ha ye elders like people like us um have not gone for that because we know it is not a legal currency we should not go but our youth almost they are the largest investor so and it was realized that largest investment so there must be when you transfer anything you sell it buy it there is some profit and this profit was untapped for in a point a taxation point of view so this time very smartly our fm has done this thing i can say smartly they have introduced so many things in taxation they that they tapped it and they Uh, impose 30% tax on this cryptocurrency not only cryptocurrency btai virtual digital asset what it can include friends now see some uh, few things i have in my note that is pdfs online pdfs sometimes we buy it is available free also but we have to subscribe also sometimes videos available digitally presentations audio files images special uh, arts whatever it is graphics design files nft you all must uh, must be coming across all these things this is a small list about i presented over here so uh, this is how all this kind of youtube income how you were paying tax you must be paying income from other sources many are earning all are earning now it will come under virtual digital asset and it will be straight away no slab 5% tax percent 30% ka tax sidha sidha is pe lagna hai and plus always there is cess and surcharge wo to fix hai it will always be levied on those taxes and one more thing all on if you buy see buyer receiver has to the deduct buyer has to who has pays suppose youtube channel is paying to you they have to deduct 1% tds on this so the i told you ki one ye tds net every time budget focuses on enhancing tax net yahan tds ka provision bhi dal diya and for this tds deduction you need not have tan number otherwise what industries all have to deduct tds is is a very 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 broad uh, area Uh, to implement all industrialists has to do all even indian common man if he is crossing some limit he has to deduct tds on rent we have to deduct tds and all everything for this you have, you have not to go for tax deduction number simply if you are under this uh, any kind of this transaction you have to deduct tds and without tan also you can submit the return so that way they have facilitated also uh, so this is how government is uh, tapping this our cryptocurrency transaction and as far as legalization is concerned rbi will uh, decide it they have to do it yet it is not uh, legalized that is there means rest assured it is and I, i don't think in because china has banned many countries has banned and it should be banned see it is a matter of currency how can you legalize it is because con- not controlled by our uh, central uh, bank how this is controlled by blockchain some private means uh, digitally so i don't think it should be legalized also but taxation has there so government is now realized they have brought some measures for this and uh, another thing is long term i already um, explained how surcharge is uh, realized and plus definition is widened in that and dif- uh, they have increased some uh, like uh, differently able person uh, they have increased tax limit or uh, like uh, what happens ki after the death so suppose i am paying for my uh, incapable child uh, some annuity so after my death only it was tax free but now it uh, during lifetime also if he receives such income it will be tax free for startups again i already t- uh, told you ki this uh, tax uh, holiday period is enhanced for one more year so this is very welcome step and one more thing uh, you all might be knowing that there is a very low tax of 15% on indian manufacturing company only indian domestic company manufacturing company provided they have start uh, um, 
uh, means uh, incorporated after 1st October 2019 and up to 5 to uh, this uh, uh, 5 years means 23 uh, it was the end period but now government has entered that time bracket also they have extended it to 2024 mm -hmm. and believe me friends this is a very welcoming means this uh, provision is 15 percent is a lower minimum rate this is the lowest tax rate what already it was 2019 uh, finance bill they have been pushed but because after 2019 hardly people could to ben could take benefit of this provision this is wonderful uh, for forming the company manufacturing company wonderful uh, this uh, scheme has been launched by government but because of pandemic many could not uh, get uh, avail this benefit so government realize this they have increased and you also promote in just uh, make aware of your friends and industrialists that there is a very good scheme for manufacturing companies uh, to avail this benefit and incorporate yourself in 24 it has been extended so very welcome uh, announcement now there is uh, some military uh, uh, very technical things are there but uh, still i would like to uh, explain it over here uh, one more thing in uh, digital cryptocurrency up to 10,000 uh, you did not de deduct it yes there is limit uh, for others and for some individuals specified individuals having uh, business income individuals and HUF uh, they have limit of 50,000 up to 50,000 they did not deduct it yes so uh, I wanted to just I forgot to add it uh, another litigation management you what happened you know ki, uh, in government there is piling up uh, of case case laws case uh, before the courts came and you know how the courts are they work very slowly and the point of uh, fact was only common in thousands of uh, filing appeals the uh, dispute was common so now the provision has come if that uh, if uh, now no more such uh, if facts are same no more further appeals will be attained and they need not file it that once this will be that will uh, the verdict will come from high courts then uh, automatically it will be applied to all such cases it is basically for department because they also uh, time is wasted for unproductive things repeated work so this is uh, some uh, not much uh, of use for uh, you people but uh, as a tax professional it is uh, much uh, much concern for us we, uh, we are benefited for this of this and uh, one more uh, i can say this adverse also the adverse announcement that the government although jetli sahab has said ki we, there will be no retrospective amendments if it is harming to taxpayer it is against the taxpayer but this budget has brought one retrospective uh, uh, announcement also regarding the cess payment what happens says you know there is four percent says education says health says so some i'm not claiming it uh, as allowable expense it is this it is not allowed as expense but some companies and even there is uh, notification from civility that this should be allowed as expense because it is for health for something means it is a allowable expense like so now government has come with a final verdict that no it will not be allowed as expenditure and this will be implemented respect retrospectively from the year 2005 so this is the adverse announcement uh, i would say of course what is good we should appreciate it what is not uh, in favor of uh, arm janta so we should uh, also uh, criticize it so it should not be at least retrospective okay fine future in future we won't take that uh, as uh, allowable expense so in uh, case of says retrospective effect is very adversely announced and, uh, one more thing now you always hear of the searches and seizures and uh, the department department makes huge addition on account of income and they have we have to pay all assesses have to pay tax but out of those taxes earlier this set of our brought for the losses used to be allowed but now it will not be allowed it will be allowed in normal course but not out of this such addition special addition on account of service such and such. So this is something to be taken.
take a note yes one more uh, very stringent provision has come in case of ngos and trust there they have made very strict uh, provisions with respect to uh, management of funds if by any means it is found that it is spent for trustees or against the rules given in the income tax then they will they will first of all scrap that uh, those ngos and uh, trust and as well as they will tax them with highest rate of 30% whereas it is tax free otherwise highest rate of 30% plus 100 rupees penalty first year per day 100% penalty first year if it is uh, found in second year also such misutilization then 200% of such amount of, of you know affairs not tax free ye what all they have na trust and ngos on that fully they will charge double on so so there is very stringent provisions have come with respect to trust and ngos everyone have to be very careful they will have to spend it according to the permissible law so in short uh, i just wanted to draw attention mummy and uh, i told the thing uh you people know ki uh, there are some incomes in uh, corporates which are exempt like earlier dividend was exempt agriculture income you may have that may be exempt if it is there the expenses pertaining to that earlier there is a long long running dispute in this case this is section 14a long long running dispute is there ki uh, if there is no income then uh, what it was settled up to now ki if there is no income uh, such exempted income then related expenses would won't be disallowed if there is income you disallowed in uh, disallow that expenditure related expenditure but now our f has came with very strict announcement that no by whether you have income this exempt income or not they, in that year see you have agricultural land agriculture in earlier year you had one lakh income but this year you may not have because of drought and all then also if you have spended anything then that will be disallowed in any all cases expenses related to exempt income will be disallowed earlier it was little flexible so this is a harsh provision which is announced and now uh, another very uh, welcoming uh, announcement is uh covid expenses if any employer spends limitless he spend for his employee any uh, expenditures for treatment hospitalization whatever for covid uh, uh, disease then it will be fully uh, allowable as ex- allowable expenditure for that employer also and uh, for non uh, employees suppose as a friend i am giving to my friend rupees up to 10 lakhs it is permissible deduction above 10 lakhs it will be taxable uh, it will be disallowed in our expenses suppose i am claiming that in case you claim that there is no issue so this uh, this is a welcome step for however they should not have put any restriction on this disallowance of uh, other than employer also but uh, they have put so i am just uh, uh, repeating it here but i think uh, by representation this will be removed because after budget uh, we tax professional make huge representation for the reforms and uh, improvement in the budget so uh, this uh, let's see what how the act will come but so far they have given this one more very important uh, uh, this uh, tapping has been done by our fm sir that uh, uh, you know ki this uh, pharma companies provide many perquisites to doctors and all now they have tapped see already council our medical council had uh, debarred it ki that such expenditure should not be allowed it is uh, such practices should not be there it is not a allowable expense in the council it was there but now our fm has also announced that ki if in any other act in any other law see anything anything is banned then it will be also banned in income tax so earlier what used to happen whatever these pharma companies were giving all facilities expenditure heavy traveling and all all, all you all people know uh, used to be allowed as claimable expenditure in income tax now it will be disallowed 
very clearly, very clear uh, amendment has come under section 37. Now it will not be allowed. So uh, this was, uh, this is a uh, little uh, grabbing the taxation, increasing the taxation hidden area, they are tapping gradually. So that's a very, uh, so yeah, not only this, uh, and one more thing, ki, uh, what I told ki, Suppose you are offense expense, you are offending any law, any law, not uh, only in income tax, but you may uh, breach the contract law, other laws. There, we have many law in India, we have law. If you are breaching and you are paying anything as offense or penalty, then it will be, earlier it was allowed in income tax, but now it will all be disallowed in income tax. Now you have to pay tax if you are paying. It will not, you cannot deduct it from income. So this is also a strict uh, provision so far as uh, it is concerned with taxation point of view. And uh, 43B, yes. Uh, uh, how I should explain you. In 43B section, what happens, uh, friends, ki, uh, whatever we pay up till the filing of return, that, though, suppose you provide, with, I have to pay interest on uh, bank borrowings, but you didn't pay by the time of filing the return, then it will not be allowed in your income tax. And the same way, it uh, earlier what used to happen, uh, these NBFCs and big financing companies, they just convert these interest uh, provisions on loans to another loan or debentures. They used to pay in form of debenture. Now government has said, no, nothing doing. If you pay by cash bank uh, mode, then only on payment basis only, it will be permissible. Earlier it was permissible in convertible mode also, but now on payment mode only. So this is also, a, they are uh, stricting the norms for businessmen. So we have to uh, just uh, be careful. And, but they have, this will be uh, applicable from after one year. So they have given one year time to manage the apps. And one more thing, what uh, I forgot to tell you about the cryptocurrency. Now it is, a, since it is an asset, hence if anybody is gifting you, gifting you cryptocurrency, then it will be taxable in hand, in the hands of a receiver also. It will be a taxable gift, in short, I should say. So in cryptocurrency, the overall TDS, you know, gift to, and tax, direct taxable as a gift, taxable, everything is there. GST is already there. So uh, friends, another thing is very, very uh, uh, tough provisions the government has announced in respect of you know, there is section 115 BBE, just uh, you did not uh, uh, buy hard this, but if you just to understand it, if anything is found in your books, unexplained, or any asset, if you can't explain ki how you have uh, availed it out of your income, suppose you have income of 10 lakh, but you have property of 2 crores, something, I'm just giving the example, there are many things uh, which uh, can be this. So, in such case, they are charging up to 78% of tax, uh, the income tax department, unexplained items. But, uh, and, uh, and you are unable to uh, define the source, okay, how you are, then they charge. But now they are also wanting source or source. So, it is very technical means they have gone one step further. Okay, you have to also explain so that two persons will be brought into uh, this uh, ambit of a uh, high taxation. Very harsh provisions have come. Sir, uh, uh, you are saying that there is nothing, Nirmala ji said, nothing in taxation. See, I am just explaining main highlighting points. There are many things. So there are so many draconian, draconian provisions uh, in the income tax, uh, you can see what I presented so far. And one more, but last I would, because there are so many things, uh, what is um, of more concern to you people is, uh, earlier in last budget, they removed the facility of, uh, facility of revising the returns indirectly. See, last year they made it, uh, suppose return filing was up to September. Every year it is September tax audits. Then till December only they permitted to revise the return. 
and now nowadays so due to pandemic there is no any specific uh, uh, i can mention ki date is there because it keeps on extending keeps on extending still we are filing audit today's last day or date of audit tomorrow 15 so uh, this is how they had announced last year but now see to so indirectly uh, revision revising income tax uh, provision was in fact abolished three months tax is nothing to revise the return because we realized little later ki what mistake has been committed in our original filing now this uh, they have indirectly abolished that uh, facility now they have come up with revise updated return concept in which they will only you can update your return only the in the cases where revenue is to be Uh, there, where the department is gaining some tax, or they will in, uh, their tax uh, means they will gain, and not the public, not the assessees. Suppose you you want to increase your refund, so it will be again the revenue. You cannot update. See, this is uh, unjust, unjust. Uh, I can say unjust announcement. If there is something. Of, uh, of revising or updating this um, revision has been named as updated return so this should be allowed in reverse case also forward case also so they have not permitted if suppose you forgot to claim any expense you cannot update your return suppose you forgot to take depreciation and all because it happens in uh, while filing return no many things skip so you realize little letter kya re ye to reh gaya So, if it is adverse to revenue, you cannot cannot update the returns. But if it is in favor of revenue, of course, you want to increase your income. Oh, very welcome. You please uh, update your return. And if if you after the this suppose so March twenty one is ending uh, on twenty two, so twenty three twenty four you have chance to uh, update it. And if you update it up to twenty three, then twenty five percent additional tax. Whatever original original tax will come along with interest, along with delay interest, and on the twenty five percent you have to additionally pay. And if you realize on the next second year, then additional tax will be fifty percent. So no doubt they have given this. They they have opened the way to revise the return, but. Uh, it is very unjust. Not in case of again the revenue, and a few other conditions are also there. In that case, also you not update it. But simply, I wanted to put it here. Ki they how they have made this provision. So some people may take advantage of this because many things come. You know why they have to uh, bring it? Because uh, nowadays there is AIS system, annual information system is there. now since it is not updated that well gradually things are coming your credit entries are coming your investments are coming whatever you are doing everything is now digitally it is visible or it is connected somewhere so now ais is de developing gradually hence they brought they thought ki are we have forgotten so many things and now here also tax can be there so they brought this provision but only if it is in the favor of revenue Same way, there was earlier. It was uh, uh, reopening of cases. Department has power to reopen your assessment if they think that something is your taxation has escaped, tax has escaped. So there were earlier in last five years only really they had very uh, very few areas they had announced in such such cases it will be reopened. But this year only last year it was only for the income below fifty lakh three lakhs. a uh, three years and above 50 lakhs it was 10 years but now this year now they realize here yeah, ye to humne zyada fayda de diya aur abhi bahut cheeze ho sakti hai isme hamara bahut nuksan hai now they came up with many more other uh, they have added condition in those conditions means indirectly they have covered your expenditure also like earlier it was income but now they have covered your expenditure also they will sum up it if it is exceeding 50 lakhs so टेन ईयर्स तक हमारा रीओपन होगा केस तो अभी ले देखे डिपार्टमेंट बहुत हो रहा था ना डिजिटल होने से दे हैव बिकम पावरलेस एंड ऑल दे हैव बिकम वेरी पावरफुल बिकॉज दे हैव सच मेनी प्रोविजन्स हैव कम विच इज 
strengthen their power they, which has enhanced their power and uh, reopening is again start uh, will all uh, will, will be there what we were relaxed with our 3 saal 50 lakh ka hum log bhi we were also in true yeah. mind ki abhi thodi shanti rahegi lekin wo shanti bhang ho gayi hai as a common man so department has power to up to 10 years agar shaadi ka kharcha aapka ho gaya bhai aaj kal shaadi mein 1 crore kharcha hona kitni common baat hai 50 lakh jo is tarah ki shaadiyan ho rahi hain they can always issue a notice to you so what this year again they added such provision so this is all against the sse uh, and in favor of uh, department so these were some very highlighting point in directives and uh, i would be failing if i do not um, explain about indirect tax i don't deal in indirect tax but there are in gst in indirect tax there are few very uh, changes have come but they are they are also very they have come with very stringent uh, provisions in especially in case of input tax credit friends we know ki the gist atma jisko kehte hain ji atma of gst is what whatever you your inputs are there whatever tax you pay on that that is allowed as credit when you are ta- out of your tax liability on your outward supply to so outward supply mein abhi pehle kya tha ki we used to even claim itc on behalf of our books to be me reflect hota hai portal pe reflect hota hai wo fir aage piche usme it was allowed we were able to even claim on account of our books although ultimately it was up to to be portal ke hisab se hi tha but now they have uh, made it to ki nahi jo portal pe hai bas wahi aapko lena hai and that also there are although you have genuine itc they have categorized it in two slabs eligible itc and non eligible itc to non eligible mein jo naye supplier registered honge unka abhi government humko itc agar unse hum if, if we are buying anything they won't be allowing that itc and if government finds that ki those suppliers are irregular means for other mistakes we will be penalized present uh, uh, supplier will be penalized he will not be allowed itc and he will have to pay more taxes so this was all uh, main main uh, change came in this gst is this and very this is very stringent provision and uh, this is going to help our working capital and all with this i think i have taken much time than what i was allotted i again thanks a lot uh, the whole organizing team for providing me this opportunity i am learning from you and i am still eagerly waiting for another our learned speaker to hear and thank you again uh, anindita ji for inviting me thank, thank you, so, you much. so much ma'am thank you so much for your elaborate explanation of direct and indirect tax i now request anushree to continue thank you ma'am for your in- intensive insights on the budget uh, focusing on what really matters to the common man of this country a uh, healthy criticism as yours is what we needed to have many new perspective towards the implementation of the budget moving forward and taking this panel discussion on a further level i deem it as a great privilege to introduce our next guest speaker professor ram upendra das sir professor ram upendra das is head and professor at the center for regional trade new delhi an autonomous institution set up by the ministry of commerce and industry government of india prior to this he was the professor at research and information system for developing countries new delhi where he served for 27 years at different levels broad areas of his specialization include international economics and development policy with decades of research experience he has contributed to various studies including intergovernmental joint study groups and international negotiating processes on behalf of government of india in the context of india's economic engagements with other countries he is the alumnus of international visitors leadership program on us trade policy organized by the us department of state at washington dc new york city minneapolis seattle and chicago He was also invited as a state guest of the President of Indonesia under the program Presidential Friends of Indonesia held at Bali, Jakarta and Bogor. 
He was also invited as a distinguished economist by the Korea Foundation in Seoul. He received a certificate of appreciation from the government of Maldives for his contribution to capacity building on macroeconomic forecasting. He has been invited to present his papers to several international conferences and events across the globe. He has numerous publications to his credit on issues relating to international economics and development, including entries in peer-reviewed journals and books. He obtained his PhD in economics and an MPhil in economics degrees from the Center for Economic Studies and Planning, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Sir, we are extremely honored to have you with us here today. I would like to request you to please share your valuable insights. Thank you, uh, Anushri, for that generous uh, introduction. Let me begin by uh, thanking the Institute of Management Studies, um, FMS BHU, uh, for organizing this very important uh, panel discussion on Budget 2022. And uh, I uh, will be uh, only uh, suggesting uh, that the role played in organizing this by Dr. Uh, An Anandita Chakravarti and uh, the warm invitation extended by Professor H.P. Mathur, Dean IMPHP. Uh, are uh, really uh, uh, very uh, valuable to me. Uh, I must thank uh, the presence of uh, Professor S.K. Dubey, Director uh, of IMBHU. Uh, my co-panelist, uh, C.A. Jamuna Shoklaji, has very elaborately uh, explained uh, various provisions of the budget, uh, which are so useful. In, I mean, I, I, I was uh, really uh, benefited uh, by her insights into the budget, especially the taxation issues. Uh, I must also compliment the comprehensive presentation made uh, by the team of uh, your institute, including Ayush, and uh, I may miss some of the names because I cannot see them, uh, but the entire team. Uh, I, it was a very comprehensive presentation. You summed up uh, in, in a very short period of time a very long uh, uh, content uh, of, of budget. Uh, let me uh, also mention that in the beginning, the cool geet that you played uh, of, uh, uh, you know, a kind which uh, reminded uh, me uh, not only about uh, our spirituality and poetry and scientists and scholars that uh, Varanasi has produced, um, uh, BHU has produced and uh, the melting pot that uh, BHU and Varanasi have served to uh, the Occidental and the Oriental philosophies, uh, the melting pot of Western and the Eastern uh, thought processes. Uh, that was so very fascinating. In fact, it was very moving and I feel blessed that I live in a country uh, where there is Ganges and the Varanasi and, and, and BHU and people like you. So thank you so much uh, for that. I will be very brief because I know there is a limit to listening to anything on any subject in everyone. And I am very mindful of that. But I, I mean, I feel honored to be part of this process. And I'm very sure this is just a beginning of a long term association amongst us academically um, and uh, uh, we will be jointly doing uh, many more uh, events or studies uh, in future that is how i look at uh, uh, my association with uh, uh, all of you now this budget uh, let me first uh, uh, there are three strands on which i will touch upon because a lot has been said already and uh, so the first strand is that if you see this budget, it shows considerable degree of maturity, whereby policy stability has come out in a big way. 
so despite the fact that uh, my co-panelist jamuna ji uh, mentioned uh, about various uh, uh, restructuring and reforms uh, that pertain especially to the direct taxation and also some uh, elements of indirect taxation overall if you see uh, there is a degree of policy stability the budget is futuristic it is uh, laying the foundation of an Indian economy which is going to reap the benefits of the steps that are taken now the future generations will benefit uh, more but at the same time the budget blends the present with future but it also provides us an opportunity to view the overall canvas of budget in not in isolation but as a part of the overall policy paradigm or the economic policy process economic policy making process which has been for the years so over the years if you see the budget fits into that it connects the past few years with the present in the immediate term and some 20 25 years of vision as well. the budget tries to blend the micro with the macro the budget tries to touch upon the agriculture manufacturing services the budget has tried to combine the initiatives in terms of public expenditure with the crowding effect of the public uh, private uh, the budget is also uh, you know trying to link the traditional areas uh, of agriculture and rural economy with the modern technology like drone and initiatives like startup the budget also provides a connect of the domestic economy with the external economy what i'm trying to say is that the budget while focusing on growth is not neglecting job creation now let me touch upon a couple of things uh, you I, I should be also mentioning because we are talking uh, with you and you being in varanasi the budget has a very important emphasis in terms of national organic corridor usually you hear about industrial corridors and uh, you know export corridors and things like that but the budget talks about organic farming corridor which is you know five kilometers uh, from uh, of each side of the ganges river and uh, it starts from uttarakhand uh, uttar pradesh uh, bihar and goes up to west bengal so oh, this is this is something uh, which is uh, new which is technology driven which is visionary but it doesn't neglect uh, the traditional sector of you know because you also know that there are a lot of diseases today uh, we hear about and one of the reasons i'm not saying the only reason is because of the chemical residue in food products and therefore the emphasis to focus on organic farming alongside the gangetic uh, you know fertile land uh, is something which is very fascinating and if you combine that with availability of uh, chemical free fertilizer and availability of drones and so many startups where farmers can get linked to the domestic market and also the external market through digital infrastructure the optical fiber plant that we have to, to make it reach the the rural uh, economy and if that happens then the integration of post offices with the banking system is going to galvanize further economic activity now one one thing i wanted to focus on and that is if you see the capital expenditure uh, which is 35.4% uh, overall outlay of the budget is around 500 billion us dollars and out of that around 100 billion us dollars is capital expenditure now if you link this with the seven engines of 
Prime Minister's uh, Gati Shakti Master Plan, where you have construction of roads, ports, railways, civil aviation, logistics, inland waterways, and so on. That, if you link with this capital expenditure, then you would realize that this is going to create great economic activity in our economy. How? You know, when you try, just to give an example, when you try to build a road, uh, you would require uh, the construction materials to build the road. So there will be demand from cement and, you know, steel and iron and steel sector. You will be requiring services. So you will be requiring architectural services uh, to, to, to design a road. You will be requiring uh, services of a civil engineer, a mechanical engineer. You will be requiring chartered accountants. I mean, Jamunaji is here. So, so where you build a road, it's an infrastructure, but it has a demand side effect in the realm of goods that are manufactured. It will be demanding more services of engineers, accountants, so much. And uh, at the same time, it will also have demand from the informal sector, whereby you will require semi-skilled, unskilled labor force also contributing to building a road. So road is just an example. Now imagine this capital expenditure combined with Prime Minister Gati Shakti Master Plan how it is going to have a multiplier effect in terms of domestic economic activity, which is going to generate demand for goods in different sectors and also demand for services in various areas. And they are all going to provide additional employment. So employment will be of unskilled, semi-skilled, skilled workers in uh, in uh, in the in the area of uh, uh, say the road that you are building but it also will ignite the second round of employment generation in the case of the services that i mentioned in the case of the materials that will be demanded so to produce those materials you will require further investments and further people will be employed there so what i'm trying to say is that this is a growth oriented budget uh, this is a budget which focuses on public expenditure by by uh, the government, by 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 both central and state governments. But the crowding in will happen because the private investment will come thinking that oh, here is a project, and in this project, what I produce is going to be demanded more. So they will expand their scale of production. So. The growth orientation of this budget is going to contribute to a large uh, segment of the economy where you will have multiplier effect uh, in terms of uh, greater economic activity. So, to 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 you know, in a in a way, if I if I say that this growth oriented budget is also employment generating. And therefore, some of the numbers, only time will tell whether those numbers of employment generation will be achieved or not. But what I'm saying is that from the logic of it, uh, we can expect that a lot is going to happen. And therefore, some of the growth projections in economic survey, the growth projections by multilateral institutions uh, are expected to be achieved uh, in, in, in the coming years and, 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 and the quarters. I will be also touching upon briefly on this whole uh, virtual digital assets. See, uh, the term cryptocurrency has not been used in, in uh, and because you are all young, uh, you know, you know, people um, and a lot of youngsters have actually been part of this cryptocurrency thing. The budget was very cautious not naming cryptocurrency. And it has said, as Jamunaji also mentioned, uh, dig virtual digital assets. Now, you know, if whatever little you would have studied in economics, uh, for a currency, 
you know currency has three functions and two features three functions are that money is a unit of exchange money is a store of value money is a unit of account there are three functions of money but there are two very distinguishing features of money also that there is a general acceptability of money and how does that come about because that is a legal tender so because something is a legal tender it is generally acceptable and because it is generally acceptable it can perform the functions of being store of value a medium of exchange and a unit of account and therefore crypto cannot be called a currency i mean in fact the entire nomenclature is not correct and that is why in the budget it was not mentioned so it is if at all if it is something it's a private digital virtual asset right if at all there is a digital currency there is a cb cbdc concept which is being worked out globally and india is also taking lead recently you would have heard rbi governor also which was mentioned by the uh, the finance minister normal ji as well what is that central bank digital currency so that will have a legal back so what i am trying to say is that these even to call crypto as currency is technically wrong and therefore it was avoided and it was called digital uh, virtual digital assets and as jamuna ji mentioned that how to define that there are many things that can come into that youtube income or nfts and so on so in that they have uh, have a flat rate of 30% and to check the trail of transaction 1% of tds so but having these provisions doesn't make crypto world or these digital virtual assets uh, any legal so its legality is still under question taxation is a separate thing again jamuna ji mentioned very very rightly so i will stop at this because uh, with the last point that the budget also combines the economy the sociology and the environment so if you see there is a social infrastructure the social benefits uh, in terms of health education combined with physical infrastructure and economic activity plus green bonds which will be spent on green infrastructure you know things and 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 creating green jobs so it has a three dimensional uh, or four dimensional you can say you can say economy uh, climate which is environment the social side and also the innovation and technology thank you so much for your time thank you sir for your noteworthy words your insights have well proven the saying that brevity and simplicity is the soul of wit now i would really uh, like to invite a few questions from our audience i would request everyone to type in their questions in the chat box or you can directly ask the questions students you can directly ask the question to sir and ma'am Uh, ma'am there is a question for you uh, ms pooja asks that can we say that through taxation they have regulated cryptocurrency or there is a positive future for the same uh yes pooja they have regulated only taxation part what uh, sir has also said and uh, i had also said only taxation government finance minister is only concerned with taxation that has been regularized but yet to be legalized it is not yet a legal currency what sir has already well explained even myself also so any doubt am i clear in this puja yes they because of tds it will be under control really everyone will be known to government how many uh, investors are there tds provisions uh, help in this puja okay. is it uh, okay i think ma'am it is okay uh, any other questions uh, hello good afternoon ma'am and all the esteemed guests am i audible yes you are yes. 
Yes. Uh, Ma'am, just I wanted to ask that uh, you have said that uh, government has legalized, uh, has moved toward the not legalizing. It just uh, uh, like uh, they are only taxing, uh, tax uh, implementing tax on the crypto asset. So, ma'am, if anything is not legal, how government will tax that? Like, uh, if uh, I get some, uh, I get some uh, benefit from a theft money, and government want that. Government is saying like, I am taxing it, but I am not legalizing it. So, how can be that? If I am going to uh, show any income from any asset, so it will be shown in my uh, book, na, ki it is from like my uh, investment or uh, from my some other types of what source I will uh, show in my textbook so that how I am getting this. This yes. is my ma'am. How... Uh, okay, yes. okay. Please continue your question. Yeah. I'm just I wanted to be like government. Uh, I think see, so. Government uh, is not... As far as the income tax is concerned, they have nothing to do. Even smugglers, if they pay tax, income tax can won't issue them notice. They are fine. They are happy that you have paid tax. For them, it is your money is legal and right if you have paid tax but civil act, uh, law is also there okay? civil law it has to be considered whether it is legal or legal you should not do this business you should not go to arms for this uh, smuggling and all so all laws act according to the rules and whatever is um, is mentioned in their books and law whatever constitution allows such things so uh, the, i think this part is clear to you and uh, as far as currency world is con uh, concerned it is uh, rbi has rbi has to only what we expect from rdi or rbi or our government whether it is a legal currency or not no it is yet not a legal currency in india what is future still it is very uncertain i don't think that it will be legalized let's see if it has it happened so but so far it is not a legal currency in spite of that you can run it see it is not a legal currency in india but it is a legal currency in other countries and you are always free to invest on those countries nobody our government is not saying foreign we are inviting foreigners to invest so why not we can we can also invest uh, to outside our country so how you will uh, 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 means uh, means you will have to write in your books that you are invested in cryptocurrency uh, in this country then how the taxation has to be governed in india whatever you earn in india it is taxable in india it is a taxation part you will have to read uh, textbooks uh, so whatever you earn in india it is taxable and so it was so far it was not brought into the books ki how it will be taxed People were getting you, uh, even uh, many people were taxing it, but at different slab rates, as per slab rates. If you are below the 5 lakh uh, uh, tax level, no tax you used to pay on cryptocurrency, even though you might have that income. But now, if even you have 10,000, more than 10,000 income, it will be taxable in your hands at the rate of 30%. So, taxation part is a different aspect. And uh, legal and illegal is different uh, aspect. It is governed by civil code of conduct, civil uh, uh, law. It is governed by civil laws, civil acts. Am I clear? Yeah, tax exactly. is very, it stands on very different footing. It only aims on taxing and non-taxing. Penalizing uh, notices, if you don't pay tax, it may impose penalty and even everything, even though it is the income from smuggling. So taxation is altogether different. Okay, ma'am. Uh, uh, sir, you may also add something on this. <laughs> sir, there is another question from uh, Piyush Kant Tripathi. Why was a sudden jump seen in the government bond market after the budget presentation? Will this have any significant impact on cost of capital? So, Jamuna ji, would you like to answer? Uh, yes, a uh, little bit myself and sir, I would also uh, would like to hear from you. Uh, you mean to say uh, enhancing investment or booming market index, something like? Because uh, how can you uh, say that uh, there is jump in investment hardly there is uh, 10 days uh, back we had our budget. So I think uh, yes market was high. You know 
market works on sentiments ki what people th- had uh, thought that this time because of pandemic many thing will be uh, forgiven means many stringent things will come uh, many duties will be enhanced and like that so market works on that sentiment and market works on capital so every year you just i have noticed sir that uh, something they bring very uh, positive in case of uh, investment of shares this year also in uh, by the way of surcharge so that directly hits our uh, stock markets directly it hits and duties all the duties what they have reduced maximum what we can produce in india and even not much uh, it will affect the jewelry market but diamond at least they have touched upon women so diamond jewelry will be little cheaper so this is how you know this do two things investment part is touched by surcharge on capital gains all kind of that it is really a booming because what i will be